Hello and welcome back to another video in my kitless pen making series. So I had previously made um, this diamond cast pen, um, which I made with a Joro section. Um, so Joro is my preferred nib, which I use, um, but I do also use uh, Bok nibs from time to time. So today I'm going to um, follow the process to make a uh, Bok section for this one. So I'm not going to film the whole thing, um, the making of the threads, making the threads of this section is exactly the same, so you can just refer to my other video, and turning it and finishing it is also exactly the same, so I'm just going to concentrate on the drilling and tapping sections. Thank you. So this is my piece of material I'll be using today. So it's actually from the same blank um, that we I made the rest of the pen out of. Um, the good thing about the diamond cast pens, uh, pen blanks, um, so they're about nine inches long. So they're a little bit longer than most other companies make kitless blanks. Actually means you have enough room to, or from my design anyway, make two nib sections out of. Which either means you can provide a matching set if people want two different nibs in it. Or if you make a mistake and need to do a second one, then you've got um, enough material to do a second one from the same bit of material, which uh, happens more often than you'd expect. So I'll get this all prepped. Um, so I'm going to square it up, um, turn the tenon and cut the threads, and then I'll come back and we'll show the process from there. Okay, so we've got the tenon cut, the threads cut on here now, so fits nicely to our pen. So we've got that. So next thing we need to do is drill um, a hole sort of through here. So this will be the end. So this will be the end that the converter sticks into. So we'll go ahead and drill that. Um, so we use a 7mm bit to drill through, exactly the same as a Joro. Uh, again, I use a 7.1 because it's actually closer to 7. So lathe again set about 175. And then we... Drill through carefully, so we just need to make sure we're nice and slow that the, build, the drill bit doesn't grab. And just in and out and clear the, the shavings. Again using WD-40 as our lubricant, just make sure we get a nice smooth cut. It doesn't generate as much heat. Um, sizing on this one actually isn't too critical. Um, I think some people actually use a 6.8, 6.9 millimeter bit because uh, where the threads will be cut will actually drill through um, with a different size drill bit. So, um, whereas with the Joro threads, this this drill bit when it's going through this way is actually preparing the material where the threads will be cut on. Um, but because the Bok uses a M7.9 by 0.6 um, pitch thread. Um, so we need to use a different size drill bit to um, get that size right. Okay, all the way through. Okay, so that's this This side is now all done, so we need to turn around and do this side. So first thing we need to do is uh, square it off to the right size. Uh, 
Uh, so I've just marked on here where I need to take it down to. So I'll do that with my carbide end bit. Um, again, most you can do this with your parting tool if you so desire. Make sure you get this nice and tight. need to go down until I can't see the Nico mark anymore. Uh, it doesn't need to be too exact, as long as I'm within a millimetre or so. Okay, so the first bit we need to drill is the correct sizing for where the threads will be cut. So it's an M7.9 uh, by 0.6, so to work out the drill bit size you need to subtract the 0 0.6 from the 7.9 so that leaves us with a size of 7.3 millimeters to cut these threads in um, so we've got, got a 7.3 millimeter bit um, I got this one off eBay it's quite hard to find a 7.3 millimeter bit um, or something equivalent it's quite critical that you get this to the right size you'll have a lot of trouble if you're not using the right size drill bit with this particular one box are quite tricky. Um, so now we need to drill a hole from the very top here down to past the ends of the threads here. So it doesn't matter if we go a little bit further past, um, but just make sure that we're covering this bit here. So I've marked on uh, the, the drill bit where I need to stop. So that's a bit of there. So I'll line it up. So we've already got a 7mm hole through, we're going to drill back the other way with a 7.3 so we're only really just shaving off the um, the ends of it, uh, or the inside of it, so really not making it much bigger. Um, so it should be a fairly easy hole to drill, shouldn't be too much pressure. So again, lathe said it's um, 175, so this one's not too critical if you go too far in. Um, you just need to make sure you've covered those drill bits. The next hole will be the sort of really critical one that we get right. Okay, so you can see, even though it's gone in quite a fair way, it's really not removed very much material. Okay, so the next drill bit we need to do is um, we need to drill up. To where the threads start so this one is critical that we sort of go to there and maybe only tiniest tiniest bit past it if we go too far past then we'll remove too much material there won't be very many threads if we don't go far enough um, means we'll be starting to try and cut the threads too early and it just won't work when we're trying to get it in so for this we use a uh, 21 64th which works out about 8.1 8.2 millimeters um, I find the 8mm bit is a bit too tight. Um, there's basically, you need to make the hole big enough um, so these threads can get all the way in past the um, other material here. Um, so the threads sit at about 7.9mm um, generally. So, you know, an 8mm bit really makes it a little bit too tight because if they don't have a cut exactly. So the 8.2mm is sort of ideal. So, again, I've marked it. Um, so this one we need to be very exact where we go to um, you know again if you go too far then you're not leaving enough material you're probably better to go a little bit too far than too short um, but really don't want to go too far at all well, you just won't leave yourself just won't leave yourself enough threads material Okay, so at this point it's a good idea to check to make sure this fits in um, it goes in it's not really too loose but it's not tight um, if you used a too small drill bit for that last one you wouldn't be able to get this the thread section 
in. Um, so you can see that it sticks out by about that much, uh, which is about the, the length of the threads that are going in. And the last drill bit we need to do is for the collar here. Um, so we just need to drill a little tiny little recess for the collar to sit in. Um, so the diameter of that is about 8.7 millimeters. So I find a 23 64 or a nine millimeter, nine millimeter bit will work great. Um, you can also use one of your um, center bits um, and just sort of stop it at the right size and that way you leave sort of a nice sort of curve for it to sit in um, but also works well with your live center for later. So I've just got my so 23 so just really need to do a tiny bit with this one. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is cut the threads. So this is our tap, so it's the M7.9 by 0.6, so it's specific to the box, you can't use this for anything else. Um, so same process, I put it in my Jacob's chuck, just give it a good clean out. WD-40, WD-40, now we have this sitting in loose. So advance the towel stock up so it's just sitting straight but not sort of holding it in. And so then we do the backwards and forwards and cut our threads. So feel it cutting. So you need to go in not too far, only about four or five millimeters or so, maybe six or seven. You should be able to pull out your um, threads that are cut. So that's why we know it's been cut quite cleanly. So now this is where most people get into trouble. So you think you're done. Um, this will go in, but it's not going to turn. So you only get sort of about half a revolution and it just doesn't work. Um, so the Bok ones are just a bit difficult. I don't know whether it's the design or whether these taps just aren't quite right. Um, but I've used a couple of different taps from a couple of different manufacturers. I don't know whether it all comes from the same source. Um, they all seem to have the same problem. So what I do is I take this out, take it out, and I basically just run this through um, a few times. And basically I need to, what the problem is, is that the tap isn't cutting the threads deep enough. So the way I overcome this is basically I hold it in my hand and I push down with my thumb on the on the bit of resin or material and just twist it like that and you can sort of feel it um, cutting the threads again. So you just got to be careful that you've uh, put it in and just turned it on a couple of revol revolutions just so you're not um, cutting new, uh, cross threading it and just go through and do this a few times. Just make sure you get it all the way around so you can see a bit of material there that it's taken off. Just clean. So it sort of starts to go a little bit further. If I really forced it to go, it's not quite working. So we'll go again. You can hear it sort of cutting. So if you're doing this with a softer resin, it's easier. If you're doing it with an acrylic, this process is a bit harder. So acrylic cuts is a bit harder for it to cut. And I pull it off. Again, you can see the material there. Clean out. Okay, I'm getting closer. It's a bit tight, but it is going on now. So you can see we can turn it on. It sits nice and flush with the thing. Um, it's probably a bit too tight, so we'll go again. So I'm using a just random shop bock nib. Um, I would never use an actual nib for, for this because you end up quite tight. So this one is, I would never actually use this nib for any writing. I'm sure it's well and truly destroyed by now. So don't bring a good nib out. You need to have a spare one for this um, because you will inevitably, be, inevitably get it stuck in there. So just keep going with this. Do this a few times. 
This is the only reliable way I've been able to get this work. Okay, test fit. Now it's going on really nice. So it's not tight, just turns and then it stops. Um, so it goes in a little bit, which gives us a little bit of room to sand off the edge and get a nice sort of clean finish on the edge. So that's pretty much it. Um, so now what I would do is put my uh, mandrel in here and turn it. So I won't um, demonstrate that again uh, from here on in. It's exactly the same as the other video. So I'll just turn it to the desired shape and dimensions to make sure it fits inside the cap and then sand and polish it. So I'll show you the finished product once it's all done. So I finished turning the box section now. So Jess, if you can remove your cap and show it. And hold it up. So that's the finished one with the box. So we can see matches, pen, and then Emily has the Joe one. So they fit interchangeably. The nibs are roughly about the same size. Um, so yeah, so the process, very similar. Um, just different drill bits and things. So these are my two models who were begging me to be in one of the videos. So they're showing off. Yep, so hold up, hold up finished parts girls. Just a bit off. Okay, thank you everyone and I'll, we'll do some a question and answer video fairly soon. Thank you.